So Worcester Street, um, which is known as Little Italy in New Haven today, uh, got its start largely by uh, being close to the factories. Um, New Haven was an industrial city, and at the time of immigration, peak immigration, um, a lot of Italians came here uh, to work at Sargent Manufacturing and other companies like the rubber company, uh, you know, there were textile companies, there were hardware companies, um, carriage companies. So these were largely located in the Worcester Square area, and Worcester Street, uh, which was a block from the, uh, the harbor, actually had um, a lot of properties that were purchased by Italians. They would um, maybe raise an old house on sort of brick base and build a store below and live upstairs, or they would build a, uh, a tenement house um, for their family or their, you know, for their community. So in a lot of ways, the Worcester, Square, Worcester Street was a lot like other streets, but um, we know it today only because it hasn't been uh, demolished completely. What Worcester Street has done for the community is, is save and keep Italian culture in New Haven, where in many other cases it's gone. It's the fact that we have the best pizza in the world located in two spots, three spots really, on Worcester Street. Um, and it's available, it's open, uh, it's demanded, it's never a letdown to me. And it's, uh, it's really a legacy that New Haven has that I think is uh, really important. The history of Worcester Street. Hmm. My grandfather immigrated from Italy um, back in the early 1900s. He had to go back to Italy to fight in World War I. When he returned after World War I, he brought his wife and he came directly back to New Haven. And he got a job on Worcester Street at the Generoso Macaroni Factory, and it was also a bakery in there. And um, that's where he started to uh, fashion his pizzas. And he had um, a cart that he would push up and down the street. There was a lot of manufacturing. And uh, he would sell his pizzas. But my grandfather only had a sixth grade education. And he, you know, he couldn't remember who he gave a pizza to and this and that. So my grandmother, who was educated, said, well, why don't you, you know, have him come to us? So, um, the, the location that we're in now currently, uh, it's Frank Pepe's The Spot. It's a smaller location next door to the large location. And uh, that's where, where he originally started in 1925. And um, he did very well for himself. Uh, he survived uh, the Depression. Uh, and actually in uh, 1936, he moved, uh, the, his business grew so much that he moved to uh, the current location that's formerly known as Frank Pepe's. So this is uh, the original Frank Pepe location right here. This building goes back to 1921. In the back is the original building that it was added on to. But this building right here was built as a bakery even before Pepe got here. So it's interesting that you know this is still part of the Pepe's family because even after Pepe left in 1936, he moved over next door. Uh, this became a bakery for the people who owned the property. It was the Bacamoyello. And so there's a lot of baking history here. But this building has the, the original Pepe's oven, which goes back to, again, 1921. This was supposed to have been a gift to a baker who was supposed to marry into the family. That's the, uh, that's the lore. That's what was, I was told. Uh, my grandfather came in here. He came to this location in 1925. It's known as Francisco Pepe Bakery. That's how it was listed um, with the city. Worcester Street is the last vestige of the Italian community in New Haven, and it's world-renowned because of Pepe's. Um, Pepe was able to create one of the larger pizzerias in the country um, early on in the 30s, you know, when he expanded. So since that time, he's, he's made a name for himself and allowed more people, including Yale students, um, including presidents, including politicians and sports people and you name it, actors, everybody's had a say. And, and even Sally's um, has had the same impact on 
on people, on Yale students, on uh, politicians, actors. It was Frank Sinatra's favorite pizzeria. Um, he would order it to New York uh, in the 40s when he was singing in New York City. He would have it go picked up. Um, and he was really close with the, with the Consiglio family. So it made sense. Um, we, we do know about his Patsy's connection, but he loved Sally's Pizza. So some of these aspects really helped uh, grow and make uh, Worcester Street very famous. The most positive experience I've ever had on Worcester Street was the last time I was eating at Sally's and the, it's just that moment when the pie gets into your mouth <laughs> you start chewing on it and you've been waiting and waiting and then you smell it and then you see it, you touch it and then you, you bite into it. We, let's see, opened in 1938. What it was was a bread bakery that had gone under and my grandmother purchased it. I think it was like six or eight hundred dollars. Uh, my father, who at the time was the oldest, he was the, he was 21. And before that, he had worked for his uncle Frank Pepe down the street. He learned the trade from him. He started working there as a young boy, maybe eight, ten years old. And he helped him out quite a bit, you know, along the way. Al Gore was in here. A lot of, lot of well-known celebrities over the past, you know, movie people, music people. And uh, after about a lifetime, it became, you know, very, very successful. New Haven has the best pizza in the country, and Worcester Street is basically the epicenter of that. My name's Nadine. I'm from Aunt Sonia. Uh, we're from Anaheim, California. <laughs> I'm from New York come to Pepe's once a week because it's the best pizza. Um, I came for a business trip and I did a research online of places to eat and this was one of the spots. Pepe's Pizzeria. I've been coming here since I was... Uh, About 35 years. 35 years. Tonight the pepperoni ruled. It did. I thought the clam was good. And tonight. the white clam. They were all good. I know many people come in here from Europe, there was a German family in here some years back, and before that, CNN came in here and did a thing on us. Uh, the Food Network, the Travel Channel, and there was a German family in here that said they were coming, they're, they're on holiday, and they saw us on TV in Germany, and they came in and tried it. But, uh, you know, being Yale, you get people, you know, students from China and, and never, everywhere else. I know people who've come to Worcester Street from England, uh, China, um, Germany, South America, certain countries. I've seen people come from all over the U.S. People take road trips and they're, they're going from one place to, you know, going up from New York to Boston or from Florida to Maine and they're like, we had to stop. We heard about this. So people are sort of putting it on their list. The customers are awesome. You don't understand. It's generation and generation. So the most, the, one of the funniest things, well, my gosh, I mean, one time somebody uh, proposed, well, there are a lot of times people propose, and then um, President Clinton came in last, sat, last Thursday. Um, we've had many celebrities come in, but you know what, my focus is not on the celebrities, it's on the people, it's on, it's, it's, it's the people that come in here that have been coming in here for so many years, or new people that come in. Celebrities are okay, they're great, but it's, it's people like you, it's, you know, that come into our restaurant. That's what we're all about. We're not like Hollywood, although I would love to be in Hollywood. But it's, it's not Hollywood. Um, Italian culture has stayed on Worcester Street because of, um, you know, collection of businesses that are there the societies that are still there and proximity to each other so that to keep a tight-knit community um, has allowed both the businesses to thrive but also the community to stay, some of the community to stay there. I think having um, it kind of being like an Italian neighborhood gives New Haven like 
part of their culture. Because we have Libby's, we have um, Abate's, Tony Seals, Consiglio, Sally's. So we're here on Worcester Street talking about pizza, but you don't just talk about pizza on Worcester Street, you have to talk about the other bakeries um, and places to get delicious food, which include Libby's. Uh, Libby's goes back to 1922. Uh, they were started across the street on Worcester Street originally in a little storefront uh, where they they had you know a townhouse basically in a storefront. And it was a Italian pastry shop. And there were a bunch of these in New Haven, and they were a place where you'd get your sweets, you know, cookies, cakes, pies, uh, and of course, um, ice. You know, Italian, we call it Italian ice, but ice was a, a tradition out of southern Italy where it's uh, really hot temperatures and you want to cool off, and you got fresh ingredients like lemon and oranges, and you mix that together and make Italian ice. So that was a tradition here of making that, and Libby's um, still makes it here. So. Um, after you eat a pizza at Pepe's or Abate's or any one of these places, you can come down here and, uh, and get an, an ice. Um, or you could, you know, stuff yourself with a bunch of pastries. But, um, you know, the, the family, the Delamora family still runs this business. And, uh, and they're doing a great job. So I, I do like seeing people who've never had New Haven pizza before because they, they are either, like, shocked that it's so good or they've never they never heard of it, which is weird, but, or they're from New York sometimes, and they're like, no way, it's better than New York. And then they eat it, and a lot of times they're like, wow, it's better than New York. And, um, and then sometimes there's people who are just like, it's pretty good, you know, and that's okay. So I think seeing the reaction is great, but the information that I give on the tours, for example, it can shock people that we invented, basically invented the pizza box in New Haven. Um, we had the first, uh, a frozen pie machine, um, vending machine, pizza vending machine was invented in New Haven and that there were more Italians in New Haven per capita than any other city so we had this understanding of pizza before anyone else and, and I like when people are kind of surprised by that um, but people from the area aren't surprised they're like oh that makes sense lots of pizza lots of Italians sure mm -hmm.